Hello guys, I'm Tarashish. I'm an undergrad student from India and I'm sort of new to web development, but uh, I was an GSOC intern for the Open Hatch project last year. So I'm going to talk about WebRTC and how you can easily build uh, real-time web apps with WebRTC and Python. So first, let me tell you what this talk is about and what it's not about. It's kind of a high-level overview of what WebRTC is, what it can do, and what APIs it has. And then there is this overview about the signaling system. We'll get to what signaling system is and how it works and all that, and how exactly do you implement it. Uh, next, what it's not about. It's not really a deep uh, guide about uh, what web, WebRTC can do, how the things work inside WebRTC, because let me tell you, I'm not that experienced to actually tell that to you, and it's not really in-depth talk about signaling, because actually it depends on your particular use case. So let's start with WebRTC 101. First question, what exactly is WebRTC? So WebRTC is this new technology. It was developed at Google first, and then they open sourced it. It actually lets your browser or any client, for that matter, to talk to another client's, another, its peers in real time. Uh, before WebRTC, browsers didn't really have the capability to uh, get the media sources, uh, like access your webcam or your microphone directly. You sh uh, we should uh, use some kind of native plugins and download and install them to uh, let our browsers uh, access the media sources, but now WebRTC, uh, WebRTC actually provides you some JavaScript API so you can actually access media directly from your browser and then communicate that media or even arbitrary data, like it can be textual data or binary data to peers directly. It's uh, sort of a peer-to-peer -peer network. Uh, so as I told you, uh, WebRTC mainly has three functions. First thing, sorry, oops, oops. Oops. Okay, you can go now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, yes, three functions. First is to access and acquire the video and audio streams from uh, your webcam or your microphones. Second is to establish connections with your peers and actually transmit that uh, data, that video, audio data that you acquired to other peers. Then the third thing is you can communicate arbitrary data. Uh, suppose you are building a game, you can just uh, communicate JSON or something or files or whatever you want. So for these three functions, uh, WebRTC provides three JavaScript APIs. First one is get user media. It lets you pull out all those video and audio streams. Second is RTC peer connection. It's here the magic really happens. You communicate with your peers and all that. Third is RTC data channel. Data channel lets you communicate the arbitrary data that is not the audio video only. So first, get user media acquiring audio and video. So it really has a simple API. You, Navigator is the global object, and uh, Navigator that get user media gets you all the audio, video tracks. Uh, you pass in some constraint uh, object uh, into it and specify all uh, resolution, and uh, do you want audio or video or both? It provides you with tracks, video track and audio track, 
and you get channels like uh, left channel for your audio, right channel for audio, and, and it's what the code looks like. Uh, this is the constant object, and uh, you can pass video, true audio, true or both, false, I don't know. Then uh, the resolution of the video you want and all that. And then uh, you pass in the success callback, so if you get the stream and whatever you want to do with it, you can do it inside the success callback and then the error callback, oh no, error happened. Um, then it's the RTC peer connection object. It really does all the heavy lifting, uh, does noise cancellation, echo cancellation, codec handling, peer-to-peer -peer communication security, and all that ban bandwidth management. It uh, um, sort, of, sort of figures out uh, what the bandwidth is for the clients and then uh, what sort of, what resolution should you transmit and all that. Uh, it's built in, so you don't have to worry about that. It does sort of does all this automatically. Is there some way to influence the bandwidth management from the JavaScript side? Uh, no, I don't think so. It automatically does that. So this is what the code looks like. Uh, you get a peer connection object, then. Uh, there are these event handlers, uh, so what you want to do when you get a remote video stream attached. Or first, uh, you actually create an offer, you send that offer to your peer, then they send you back an answer, so then the communication actually begins, and then you can have a bunch of uh, these uh, event handlers. So what do you want to do? after you got the offer, what do you want to do after you got the remote uh, video stream or something. <coughs> then the RTC data channel, it's kind of, uh, the API is mostly like uh, WebSockets, but uh, uh, with WebSockets, uh, you actually uh, send the data over to the server and then back to another client, but uh, in case of RTC data channel, it's like client to client, so the latency is pretty low and you can choose between UDP or TCP, so uh, depends on uh, what your data is. Uh, like uh, if you want uh, a reliable uh, connection, uh, a reliable transport or a fast transport, so you can choose and uh, it's secure. There is DTLS. Uh, uh, it's secure by DTLS, and then, uh, so, in short, in summary, before WebRTC, uh, client used to send data to the server, and then the server pushed it back to another client, but now it's like client to client, so everything's fast and secure, and no NSS soup, uh, snooping in between. <laughs> uh, so, the question is, how exactly uh, do the peers find each other, because if you want to communicate with someone, you just can't go into the internet and shout that, hey, I want to talk to you, talk to me, talk to me, connect to me. So you first need to uh, figure out a way that uh, you find your peer on the internet. But actually, the web RTC standards don't actually uh, mention or there is no standard for uh, finding your peer. It's up to us to implement that in whichever way we want. So this thing is actually called signaling. So signaling is uh, sort of the process where uh, you find your uh, peer and then um, communicate the essential data that is needed for to establish the initial uh, connection to uh, start transferring the actual data. So uh, I, I told that WebRTC actually peer-to-peer, -peer, but we still need servers to actually build the connection. Uh, so one example is what uh, signaling does is uh, peers connect to a certain server, then the server tells, hey, this is A, this is B, and then you can talk all you want uh, without uh, saying 
anything to the server. So before the actual call begins, the actual data begins to transfer between the clients, you need to sort of pass these metadata uh, to the other peers. You need to pass what codecs do you support, how is your bandwidth and stuff, and then what exactly is your uh, public facing IP so that uh, the connection can be made and all that and it's all taken care of by the signaling mechanism. Okay, so this is what it looks like. The apps communicate by signaling at first to exchange the session description. Once you get the session description from your other peer, you pass it into the browser and then the media actually flows from browser to browser. You don't need server then. So let's talk about how you can actually implement signaling. So signaling is just another messaging service. Uh, so you just need some way to, uh, uh, where there is bi-directional flow of data from uh, one client to the other. Yeah. It can be via a server or you can even uh, send your uh, session description via email or some kind of messaging service or even a messenger pigeon if you want. It doesn't matter if you just need some kind of messaging service and it has to be bi-directional. So for that, we have WebSocket is kind of the newest technology for signaling and uh, uh, you don't actually need to worry about uh, server, uh, sorry, browser support per uh, WebSocket because all the browsers that support WebRTC support WebSockets too. And then there is XMPP Jingle that is, uh, I don't know what that is, but uh, it's uh, used for uh, all those BOIP things and, and then there are commercial platforms like Pusser and PubSub that, that you do the message processing and then Google App Engine has this messaging channel API that lets you pass messages from one client to the other. Then there is RTC data channel API of uh, WebRTC itself. So it's not actually self-sufficient because you still need to get the connection going but uh, uh, it's sort of, uh, it's lower latency than WebSocket, so you can just uh, do the first connection uh, via WebSocket and then switch to RTC data channel and the signaling will be much faster and much more secure. Somehow. So it's what, look, what it looks like and the client sends the data, signaling data to the server and then the server sends it back to the other client and then stuff just happens. So let's see the code. Uh, I actually oh, actually implemented it in uh, Tornado. So I have this uh, rooms that uh, uh, rooms are like uh, channels and uh, they have clients connected to it and they track which uh, clients are connected to each room and then there's this room handler just uh, serving a static page and this main handle, handler just uh, redirecting people to a certain room. This is where the signaling actually happens. It's just a WebSocket handler that uh, uh, when it uh, receives a message, uh, it just uh, broadcasts it uh, to the other clients in the room. And that's it. That's all you need to implement the signaling system. Um, so uh, the code is actually, and the full code is actually on GitHub. I have the link to us. And then I just start the server and it's all done. And then uh, in the client side, I have this init function that gets the uh, video and audio data and all that. And uh, it has all uh, the peer connection stuff that we talked about. And uh, it's really just that simple. But there's a catch. 
the thing is, this is kind of, uh, it was really small in scale. Uh, when you actually, uh, when you actually build bigger stuff with uh, sort of like a clustered environment, uh, it doesn't work if you just have a sort of a global dict up rooms uh, with uh, uh, all the clients connected and all that. Uh, you sort of need something, you know, better, a better uh, messaging um, system. And I think it can be implemented easily by using something like uh, Zero MQ. Actually, the people at Talkbox. Uh, Talkbox is this platform that provides you web RTC infrastructure to build your apps on. They actually build this uh, uh, messaging system and their entire web RTC signaling system with zero MQ. It's called Rumor, I think. I don't know if it's open source or not. And so you can always do that uh, aside the web um, web socket uh, infrastructure so the code is on github uh, sorry i should have actually put the link there sorry <laughs> it's it's the link but uh, i don't know <laughs> the text uh, should have oh shit uh, the text should have said the link actually. Okay. Maybe tell your GitHub username. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's right there. I'm Sunu on GitHub and at CM Tarasishan Twitter. Thank you. So. Any questions? I think you have time for a few questions. Yes. Okay. <laughs> No questions? Okay. Thank you again. Actually, I have a demo. Um, one question. I played a bit with WebRTC, and there are quite some services on the internet where you can test video and audio conferencing with a small group of people. But what was rather often the problem that with two people it works quite okay. If you try it with four people, it's somehow stuttering and having yeah. issues and people get lost somehow or don't get in. Is there some trick to tune it a bit somehow? It's, it's kind of, uh, it uh, depends on the bandwidth because uh, uh, with uh, four or five people uh, communicating with each other at once, you sort of uh, uh, send each uh, stream separately uh, to each client. So uh, the trick would be to set up something on the server and then uh, use WebRTC infrastructure on the server and then uh, sort of uh, send the stream to the server only and then send that to each client. So you have to uh, upload uh, your video stream only to one client instead of all the five separately. Any more questions? Um, Dougal, I think you can set up now. Well, okay. thank you for that. I know. Oh, one more. Is NAT, uh, NAT traversal in any way addressed in WebRTC? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, there are some protocols called uh, uh, STERN and TURN. STERN actually uh, lets uh, the client know the uh, public, public uh, IP of uh, uh, the client. So uh, first you need to try STERN, but if it still doesn't work, then you can uh, try turn that actually sends the data through a turn server to the client to address that Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, I know Tarashis was worried. This is his first time speaking at Europe. I <laughs> very well done and very interesting. <laughs>